We'll watch the video on Game Critics, okay? Game Critics fucking suck. Right, guys? Yeah, 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 with me, and we already yeah. know that YouTube Comments well, then is that's the all premier location for intellectual gaming critiques, harboring only the most. If League of Legends suck dick, then you're. <laughs> oh man, this website's free too. You get all this just for free. Edge scholars wow. such as middle schooler Connor, but what separates this guy from this guy? Uh -huh. Well, this guy gets paid to say stupid shit. The first yeah. issue I have with gaming outlets is how their opinions are so decentralized. When you have multiple writers working on a website, you can lose track of who's actually talking. Breathe easy, Sonic fans. Sega got this one right. Sonic the Hedgehog 4, I think it was pretty yeah. mediocre. Sonic is good again. Sonic was never good. Numerous fun titles. Yeah. Sonic was ne All right, yeah, shut the fuck. Like, you have no idea what you're talking about. Like, you just have no idea. Like, if you think Sonic 3 is a bad game, you're dumb. Like, that's all there is to it. If you think so, it's, it's about- you're just dumb. Like, that's all there is to it. Ever good. The levels are great. There are no good Sonic the Hedgehog yeah. games. Super true. Super detailed backgrounds I hate and excellent animation. There are no good Sonic the Hedgehog games. I hate Fantastic these level design. Sonic is awesome, right? Yeah. Just this year alone, IGN has featured over 37 different reviewers. When you see a video from Pro Jaren or Total Biscuit or Angry Joe, you know exactly whose point of view it's coming from. Now pick a review from IGN, you have just entered the fucking lottery. It's important to yep. build an understanding between the critic and the viewer. Everyone I think that is very important because like, for example, and you do have like the larger content creators that like make reviews. People still like can tell like, oh, it's by this guy or this girl. Like, well, then that means they know what they're talking about. But like, yeah, he, he's absolutely right in like a large sense where a lot of these game reviews in my opinion, the problem that I have with these game reviews in many cases is that they don't really play the game enough. Is that their goal is to meet a expectation that you release a review on the game within like 24 to 48 hours of the game being released. That's what the issue is. View you do should feel like an extension of the last until your audience understands what kind of games you respond to. It's also exactly, and, and like that's another really big factor is like the games that you usually play, like for example, People that watch MMOs and like MMOs can watch me and be like, oh, well, this guy's probably going to have an opinion that, like, I would be more likely to agree with because he plays a lot of MMOs. But, like, for example, if you go and you watch Mizkif, it's like you're probably not going to get a lot of commentary on, like, why New World was, was, was problematic, right? Or anything like that. You're just not going to get it. That's the way it goes important to acknowledge your shortcomings as a reviewer. Mine personally is that I have no fucking patience at all. Pretty much yeah. throw any RPG at me, I'm just gonna say, nah, that's, that's boring. But you no. know what's dumber than RPGs? Anime. Unless we're talking yeah, this guy, true. you need to get this bullshit out of my face. But you know what I, I agree. hate much, much more than anime? Turn-based turn combat. But for real, I true. despise this true. shit. There's like true. two games that figured out how to make it fun, but those don't count. Three, three, Super Mario RPG. Uh-uh, Super Mario RPG, we gotta have that one too. I don't like turn-based games either. Turn-based combat is fucking boring, tedious, and draining. It is the opposite of fun. So when I yeah. say Persona 5, a turn-based anime RPG is actually pretty fun, you should go, damn. Okay, it, maybe yeah, that game is, is alright. Probably it's one of the dumbest, most frequent comments I see is, Yeah, I stopped listening to this guy after he said, Bubsy 3D sucked. Listen, fucko. Yeah. You don't have to see eye to eye on every single game to put your uh -huh. trust in someone, obviously. A critic's power lies in the consistency of their voice. But well, when it's also like their argumentation. Like, for example, there's a lot of people who don't like... Uh, let me think of a game that was, like, very heavily debated. Like, some people really liked the game, some people really hated the game. Like, Cataclysm, right? Cataclysm and WoW. I liked Cataclysm a lot, but there's a lot of people that didn't like Cataclysm. And I think that a lot of people can see the reason why I liked Cataclysm, and they can be like, yeah, I can see why you feel that way. And I can see why people thought it was awful, right, uh, as well. And I think that's really what it comes down to. And that's why having like personal content creators and like critics that uh, people understand like what their personality is, is really important because those are the critics and those are the people there who really can, you can get where they're coming from. You can see what it is. You can contextualize their opinion.
You're consistently and that comes wrong. From this is one of the least exciting platformers I've played in some time. There this is it a is. Call of Duty game. Refreshingly original. Call of Duty. Call of Duty. Call of Duty. That is when you become Armand White. I don't know who this is. This dude is the ultimate contrarian. Both of his parents were white. His name is Armand White. So he said, nah, fuck you, I'm black. According to Armand White, everything that is good is bad, and everything that is bad is good. Does this make him useless as a critic? <laughs> oh Not at God. all. When Armand White tells you that Man of Steel is the godfather Wait, wait, thanks to Zack Snyder's artistry, Man of Steel is the godfather of superhero movies. It wasn't that bad. You know, it wasn't that bad, okay? superhero films and calls it his movie of the year then you as a viewer understand okay uh -huh. so this is the worst movie yet created some films transcend even armand white though and then you have yeah. a movie like suicide squad that's just such a piece of fucking shit people hated even that this one. guy who likes fucking video game movies when even he doesn't like it that's when you have fucked up at yeah. least he stands out. So many of these reviews read exactly the same. Makes you feel eerily. No, I I think that like the best thing about it, what if Quantum TV actually released a video on Elden Ring and it was about how Elden Ring is the worst game ever made, but the entire video is like actually really good points. Like, it's, it's actually really good points and, like, things that, like, you know, they, it's like, that would be like, wait, what the fuck? Like, how is this even possible? You know what it reminds me a lot of is, like, do you remember whenever Himared made that video about how Warlords to Draenor was actually good? And he made a few other videos about how, like, something that everybody hates is actually good. And people are like, wait a minute. This is actually, like, a new way to look at things. Like, yeah, the WAD video. People love those. Like, yeah, it's the same as, like, I have people that... You know, like, to be honest, I hate Dark Souls 2, but I will respect if somebody makes a video about how Dark Souls 2 is the, uh, you know, underappreciated masterpiece. Because it's hard to be that stupid. And so I'd want to see the video. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd want to see evidence that it's possible to be that stupid. And I'll watch it. Yeah, absolutely, I will. And, like, every once in a while, there are a few good points that people make. Batman, the player, really feel like Batman. Could not look yeah. or feel more Batman. It does feel like we were feel like Batman. IGN, what did you think? Feels good different Arkham on the Asylum PCR. makes you feel like you're Batman. My reviews certainly aren't perfect, but at least I'm trying out here. Even yeah. after I put my stuff up, I'm still in the comments taking the discussion even further. Now, let's look at IGN's review of Super oh. Metroid and Metroid you play as Metroid is a bounty hunter that shoots a dinosaur in outer space with his yeah. missile 9.5. What the fuck was the point of this? I can find all this shit on the back of the box except well it's just like all other forms of journalism uh the actual information has been replaced with an opinion it's actually kind of ironic that it happened in video games too it's because the opinions the truth is the opinions are more compelling people pay attention to the opinions more they want it they're like well he said the game's good well you know what i think it's bad i'm gonna read his next article and see if he's stupid twice there, it would probably sound exciting. The only real content in this review was the number at the end of it, which is usually yeah. restricted to a 7, 8, or a 9, all of which implied the game is good. Even yeah. something as disastrous as Mass Effect Andromeda will still get away with a 7 out of 10. I play a lot of games, and on my scale, most of this shit- Yeah, it's hard to beat Contra. Like, I, I agree that, like, a lot of games don't really- like, they probably get rated too highly. I think that what happens with like game developers and like these uh these companies is that like they get a lot of uh they get a like positive press and like positive media was that was it metal slug i i just con I, I confuse those two all the time um yeah metal slug. you're right you're right i was wrong um a lot of these like you know big triple a games i feel like these game devs and not game devs these game journalists give them too high of a rating they're like wow the cutscenes were really good or it's like basically they have they have like a rubric and a metric for grading games that is not reflective of the values that average gamers have. I think that's the best way that I can say it. Fucking sucks, man. Honestly. 
even going back through the years, I find that only a few select games really hold up today. So when I do give a game a 3 out of 5, I'm saying, okay, this is a quality game. This is something worth your time that actually held my interest to the end credits. I feel yeah, like this is where it's, it's worth going back and playing. I, I think like, let me think. Like Dark Souls 1, Dark Souls 3. Uh, what other games are like actual true S tier games? Super Mario, like pretty much all of them. Uh, but, oh, man, like it's it sort of like, yeah, like Elden Ring, Bloodborne. Like it, it's actually whenever you think about, you think about the value that like a real S tier game creates. And I think about like how much better. Elden Ring is than like just your average run of the mill 9.5 rated on IGN game. And like then think about like so if Elden Ring is a 10, if we're grading on a curve, a lot of these games are like a three. They're like a three, a four, or five, right? I mean, that's pretty much where we're at. Yeah, it's like they're not grading on a curve. That's effectively what it is. Yeah, it's like Halo 2. Halo 2 is like it was just beyond like like halo 2 modern warfare 2 like warzone like these games are just like so far and above a lot of the other fps games that you can't even compare a 10 for the yeah the witcher 3 yeah there you go there's another one a lot of critics are too afraid to say something real and i think yeah, there's a lot of they factors are. that influence this gaming outlets and even youtubers now have relationships and contacts with these companies uh -huh, that is exactly right thank you for bringing that up this is something total biscuit talked about a lot do you remember that one time total biscuit was like the first fucking guy that brought this up because remember that one time he was talking about like that relationship that he had with like a publisher or like a developer or something and they said that they'll give him an xbox to play it on and then he can hold on to the xbox after he plays the game do y'all remember this this was like fucking uh 15 years ago yeah and he was like the first fucking guy to bring that up nobody else had ever said that before because people were hey i'm getting free xboxes ain't nobody gonna complain about that you know it is what it is and, and so that's what it was once part of the community no i as i said about somebody got to remember all this shit i fucking do now i remember it very well yeah it, it's just uh uh, some other guy gamergate that's what part of gamergate was for sure i think people are fucking tired of this shit absolutely that's true yeah it's people give high ratings to games because they know people that are on the development uh team that's exactly right and i think there's a lot of factors that influence this gaming yeah. outlets and even youtubers now have really that, that was what i was going to talk about um i actually think that it's possible to give out contrary opinions because like for example i've said before that i think margit is too hard of a, of a first boss in elden ring I think that Margit is a run ender and a game ender for people that play Elden Ring. And I think it would generally be a better game if Margit was a little bit easier. And that way players didn't feel like they uh, they hit a wall, right? I, I think it was too hard of a game. And I explained that uh, thoroughly. I gave my argumentation for it. I, I And Margit was easy. Bro, you watched me one shot him like three times this week, man. It's a joke. I'm not saying it's too hard. But like... A lot of people, a lot of you guys now are disagreeing with me, but whenever I said it and I fully explained it, a lot of you guys agreed with me. So I also disagree with the idea that you have to follow the, like, the opinion of the norm. Is because I went out and I said, like, hey, this is something I don't like about Elden Ring. I think this is a weakness of the game. And people were like, some of them were like, yeah, you're stupid. But other ones were like, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, I can see where you're coming from. And at least people can see where I'm coming from. Does that make sense? Relationships and contacts with these companies so they can get interviews, early copies, early game footage. This doesn't mean they're paid off, but maybe they won't criticize stuff as harshly as they should. They're part of a circle, and some of these websites are funded in large by advertising game developers, which yep. fuels these really lame trends. Mainstream critics are pretty much restricted What's this game here? developers, which fuels... Metacritic Matter, how review scores hurt video games. Uh, Jason Schreier, yeah, yeah, I, I remember, I think this is whenever he still worked at, like, Kotaku or something, and, um, I think this is absolutely the case. Yeah, of course, bad reviews hurt games, but I think really what the issue is, is that game, uh, game journalists, as I said, they have a different way, James is cancer, Jason's cancer, I don't know, I think that he's, he brought up a lot of, uh, he brought up a lot of good information. I, I also like the fact that Jason Schreier has covered the, uh, you know, like the, the Raven software. 
uh, like unionization with Blizzard, and he's covered that even after it was no longer like social media popular. So he he's brought up a lot of good points. Do, am I saying that I agree with everything that he says? No, but I, I think that like the things that I've seen from him have been positive these really lame trends mainstream critics are pretty much restricted to only play the latest releases yeah. so their standards are defined by what's been done recently and then you yeah. have this fucking shitty rat race to be the first review yeah. on metacritic so that your dumbass website can get more traffic and the end result is a column of weak ass first impressions right yeah, like all of this like yeah so the game it's like read this right a really well-written story with fleshed out character ever seen in the franchise waterfall from start to finish all in all, game, bring, game brings a few through things to the table. Uh, slightly fresher look and appeal, like cleaning out the slightly messy cupboard. Like, what? What is this, dude? What? What? What is this shit? Yeah, they play the game for a few hours and they make a review about it. And it's like they're also not really bad people for doing this because that's just the problem. Is that they are playing the game, and it's not PSX Extreme or you know any of this stuff, right? It's not one of these games, Assassin's Creed. I mean to say. Uh, it, it's they're not playing Assassin's Creed. They're playing the journalism game. And the truth is that being first to something is a lot. It's a lot easier to be first than be comprehensive. Right now, the music comes out like this. Right. People are writing a review in a, in a day. First of all, you can't listen to a, an album and rate it in a day. It's just impossible. The best reviews are entirely... I agree with that. I think that, like, I... Let me think of an example of that. Uh, I think like the best example of that is for like me personally is like Kendrick Lamar, like Good Kid, Mad City. I've listened to that album like 50 times or something like that. I, I, I and, and I think that like I really started to I, I started to like the album more. And like originally I listened to it because it was just there, right? This is like 2013. I think it's about whenever it came out. And because I remember listening to it and killing people in Timeless Isle. And uh, I, I would listen to the album and then I would also listen to it at, uh, at the IRS whenever I worked there. And I feel like I, I enjoyed the album more the more that I listened to it. But there's like other albums that I would listen to and I would enjoy them less the more that I would listen to them subjective, but that doesn't mean you throw objectivity out the window. You have to build your case with honest statements that even oh. someone who wait, what did I say? Did I did I say the word wrong? I'm I'm confused. Why are people like? Yeah, I'm confused. Did I did I say the word wrong? Say album again. Oh. oh. Okay. Uh, anyway, so yeah, uh, I, I do think that like, yeah, there's a certain value in like replayability of a game. For example, like playing Dark Souls 1 doesn't necessarily give you the full value of Dark Souls. I think that like a game like Dark Souls 1 or Elden Ring, a lot of its value isn't even in its, in, in its first playthrough. It's the fact that a second playthrough is easy to do disagrees with you could relate to. Recently, GameSpot gave the new Crash Remaster a 6 out of 10, citing some abrupt difficulty spikes. But if you know GameSpot, you know these guys aren't exactly capable when it comes to platformers. New Super Mario Bros. Wii is a tough game. Old school tough. This will test even the most seasoned platforming veterans. New Super Mario Bros. Wii is by far the most challenging game. The game's high difficulty may initially scare off new players. But why is my opinion more valid than this guy's? Well, first off, I actually completed the fucking game. This dude got halfway through the game and put his review up. What the fuck? What? You get halfway through the game and you quit? And then you review the game. Oh my god, man. This is crazy. Uck. It's funny it's because I think he's absolutely right. Crash Bandicoot is a little rough on the controls and camera, but it's completely doable until this fucking piece of shit, dumb motherfucker turtle level. Who is responsible for this fucking abomination? This has got to be one of the single worst levels I've ever seen in a video game. I think that, like, if you play a game and you don't finish the game, you should make sure that that is, like, front and center. Because, in my opinion, I think if somebody plays a game and they don't finish it, that actually does matter. 
Like, if, if you're quitting the game early on, yeah, that makes a big difference. And I don't think that their opinion doesn't make a difference at all. I actually think it's important to get the ideas and the opinion and the feedback of people that hated the game. You know, they played it for a couple of hours and it wasn't fun. You know, I think that's good. Yeah, it gets good after 100 hours. Like, I completely disagree with that. I think a game should be good immediately. Whenever I played World of Warcraft, it was immediately fun. Like, it was fun instantaneously. I played Final Fantasy. It was enjoyable instantaneously. Uh, like, uh, Dark Souls. It was fun pretty much instantaneously. There's, like, good games don't take a long time to be fun. And I think that the value of somebody playing a game and just, like, not really liking it. Like, I've had a few games like that, too, that I didn't really finish the game. Like, Alt F4. Like, I, I played halfway through it. I didn't like how repetitive it was. It felt boring, and so I stopped playing it, right? I think it's an okay game. It's, it's, it's fine. But it's not really something that I would do because that's the way that I felt about it. But, like, you have to contextualize, like, kind of, like, what your opinions are behind that. Game can feel really old. Depth perception is an issue. Stiff driving controls. Physics just don't always work. Piece of shit turtle. Hit detection in general can be a little weird. It's not quite as precise as it should be. When Reggie was developing Mario 64, he discovered that jumps requiring pinpoint precision just did not fly in a 3D space. Naughty Dog, yeah. however, said, fuck that shit, jump on this shitty turtle, kid, except it won't even bounce you far enough to get over the fucking piece of shit bridge. Uh, There's certainly a steeper than usual fuck that. Land curve. And the series has always been more impressive in my opinion on the visual end crash looking at the boulder chasing them water yeah. shimmering down a waterfall right an ancient this. temple illuminated by sunlight when you lose crash doesn't just disappear he fucking yeah. gets incinerated fucking gets crushed by a big ass boulder and i never really liked this pig game. knocks him off breaks his spine boom just turns into a little pancake falls in the water freezes to death he gets fucking killed in this game man when you finally conquer that ridiculous level, Crash says it all for you. He just goes, <laughs> Great job, yeah, except true. you missed 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 21, 22, 23, 24, 57, 58, 59, 66. Bro, this game is like cock and ball torture. This is straight up like cock and ball torture. Oh my god. 94, 95, 96, 97, 98. Well, hey man, I was the a man. BDSM game. You did a good job. The presentation is top notch, and critics have most definitely taken notice. But what's more important to a game like this? How it feels or how it looks? Which leads into my final point. The focus. focus. Yes, this is what Remember I said. when this video was about game critics? That's yeah. because I lost focus. Immediacy, atmosphere, uh -huh. variety, replayability. This is what I value in a game. If the music sucks, if the levels yep. are uninspired, if there's constant downtime, the game is not fun. If it's not I fun- I have a feeling that that exact level uh, of that Mario was actually one of the original uh, maps of Super Mario Brothers, and they just redid it to where it's a higher uh, resolution version of it. Like, I could, I could tell. Why bother? I see a lot of reviews where the language yep. doesn't really align with the final verdict. The new Super Mario Bros. series has often felt like a watered down, more casual attempt. It's just a shame it doesn't push the system's visual or audio capabilities. Bit of a disappointment. Numbing, generic, bubbly music. Playing with friends is still a bit of a chaotic mess. By the time Mario U really starts to do interesting things, it's over. Damn, he fucking hates this shit. Yeah, 9.1. What the fuck? It has a little something for everyone. Yeah, that's a good point. This is a video from 2000. Listen, guys, a video from 2017. And you know what? It's still fucking relevant. It's still as relevant as it was the day it came out. It's got 16 million views. That's a lot of fucking views. It's more views than uh, I think I've ever had on one of my videos before. Uh, yeah, it's nuts, man. Watch part two. Wait. Okay. All right. All right. We'll watch part two. Sure. Last time I talked about game critics, they had an embarrassing two years meltdown later. on Twitter. Then they plagiarized this Wait a this second, guy's wait a second. Meltdown on Twitter. Holy shit, this donkey video is bad. So it's only a 9 out of 10? <laughs> okay, that's good. It's like, listen. I have no problem with people saying the video is bad or whatever. I just think that, like, if you put out, like, what I don't like, and this is part of the Twitter drama, too, is, like, if you put out a take... If you put out your opinion on the World Wide Web and you expect people worldwide 
to not respond to it, what are you thinking? What do you mean? Then they plagiarized this guy's review and described how Star Wars makes you feel like a Jedi. Ooh. But with this video, I'm shifting my focus to the stupidest and least consistent voice in the gaming community. Okay. The gaming community. Gamers look yes. at this article and go, no, this is boring. Now streamer throws cat. This is what interests me. This article and go, why Katamari Damacy's creator left Japan? Bro, this game, I'm gonna be honest, like, I use this game as a metaphor for life. Like, I'm gonna be totally real. Like, this game, like, completely changed, like, my view on life. Like, I remember the music for the game. It was like, the, nah, 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 nah. It, like, you fucking, you're rolling that ball, man. Oh, my God. I love that fucking game. It was the best. No, this is boring. Now, streamer throws cat. This is what interests me. Ga Bro. Do you remember whenever that cat fucking bit her arm? That was the funniest fucking clip and it fucking bro he went in he wasn't taking a nibble bro this dude was fucking like took a bite man and like you could see it in the video and then he looks up at her he's like this what what you want to go what you you really want you want to throw down right here he looks straight up at shower it was so fucking funny man Interest me. Gamers will sit there yeah. and complain about Ubisoft and EA and Activision well, to their dying over breath. And, over and, and over. yet, what are the top selling games every yep. year? Ubisoft, EA, Activision. There were gamers. I think this is starting to change. By the way, uh, yeah, I, I actually think this is starting to change. There's a lot of people who are. Like, you look at games like uh, V Rising is, like, one of them, right? A smaller game. Uh, you look at Valheim. Uh, like, I, I think that, like, look at Vampire Survivors. I think that's the best example we could have is many of these games that come out now are smaller games from a smaller creator, and people just really like them. I actually think that this will become more and more the case as tools and development technology becomes more accessible to creators and developers on an individual level. I think that we're, and this is a big reason why we're doing the uh, the OTK Games Expo, is because like we want to show you guys. This is not, you know, this is actually not an elaborate fucking, uh, you know, segue into my own, you know, advertising my own event, but you know like it works right is like we think that, yeah this is right that's right it's an ad yep that's exactly right that's one of the best things uh, about game development now is you have the accessibility for it is so much lower than it was 10 years ago and it's so much easier because you can do the marketing for the game and i think that's a huge thing right marketing channels are way more open to an individual than it used to be uh you can uh distribute the game much more easily you can develop it much more easily and like that is such a good thing for games man it's great the same thing happened with the music industry. You only need a laptop to make music now? Well, yeah, I think that's absolutely true. Out here defending so Metal Gear Survive because we as a species is. are doomed to fail. But before we go any further, we need to go back. All okay. the way back. The dawn of man. Back in medieval times when yeah. the internet first came out, people reveled in their newfound anonymity Mom, to discuss video phone. games like this. Fuck you! I'm in a game! Fuck you! Put that Get the fuck out of here! Get the fuck out of here! In the modern age, however, we have evolved to a higher form of discussion. Bitch! Bitch! There it is, man. Damn! As I said, man, these, these YouTube comments, they really are something special. Now when gamers disagree with someone, they simply refer to the standard template of going, Nope, you are nitpicking and biased. I win, bye bye. The veil yep. of usernames allows people to make a complete ass of themselves with zero accountability, which is why there's- Bro, That's my favorite thing, is like, people that'll make a comment like this, and like, the first one doesn't really hit, and they feel like they're not, you know, it only gets like one like, and they're going for like three to five. And so they make another comment, and they're like, bro, you're so bad. Bro, you are the worst ever. You suck. Like, bro, you bad, not good. You not good, bad. And like, they just keep trying to go for it again and again and again. I've had people on my YouTube comments make like 12 comments on the same video. <laughs> I can just imagine. You know what it reminds me of? It's like fucking, uh, ah, and another thing. Ah, you know what else? Uh, now that I'm thinking, you know, another thing. 
differently, which is why there is is. such a big disconnect between internet noise and real life. Remember when I reviewed Octopath Traveler? Ooh, those people were pissed. They wanted blood. They were out here saying Donkey lied about a snail. Donkey is a racist for not liking Octopath Mm. Traveler. This outrage, of course, brought about the masterpiece video called Donkey is a Bad Critic. This is where a lack of understanding of game design and history hurts Donkey as a critic. You can always tell that you're about to go into the real quality section of YouTube content whenever you have a no-cam, random, unaffiliated gameplay in any way, shape, or form behind a opinion piece video. Like, if you ever see, remember, like, fucking, it was, like, the CSGO surfing or uh, playing something else, and it's, like, just random fucking video game footage. It's, like, yeah, this guy's got no fucking idea what he's talking about. He's a fucking loser. And it's just, like, randomly running around and, like, what is this, Oblivion? Holy shit. Predict the most. Donkey doesn't seem to understand any of this. There are plenty of comedy reviewers yeah. on YouTube who make more legitimate reviews than this. Also, Uh funnier reviews than this. Donkey does not understand game design and has not tried to. You were just lying. That's it. You lied. Admit it. If you can't tell, this kid is probably- Oh my god. Oh my god. You lied! You lied, bruh. Bruh, you lied. Oh my god. Admit it. Admit that you lied. 15 so please don't go and leave him a bunch of mean comments yeah. clearly he is just a big fan of octopath traveler which is why he made two 20 minute videos about how bad my review was i haven't played octopath traveler and i don't really plan to it doesn't seem like my kind of game again i have not played octopath traveler again i was this quantum's original channel because remember he got banned and then he came back right was this like his original channel like i yeah, I, I I don't know. I mean, this is just weird. Like, yeah, this is this is Quantum TV, the original. Yeah. Oh, my God. I don't know why people have such a fixation on rating games they haven't played. Like, people say I have a big ego. I have never rated a game I didn't play. Actually, like, no, wait, wait a second. Have I ever done that, guys? You, you'll remember if I've done this. Have I ever done this before? Final Fantasy fourteen? Yeah, but I played the game, though. Um, well, I, I, Before you tried it? Well, no, I said the game didn't look good. Yeah, I, I think that's fair, right? Yeah, I mean, saying the game doesn't look good is very different than rating a game. Uh, Genshin? I have never rated Genshin. Guild Wars 2? I said it didn't look good or appealing. I think that's fair. I haven't played Octopath Traveler, Uh and like I said, I haven't played Octopath Traveler. Ultimately, Uh the backlash to my video could be summed up in one comment. Donkey, why are you reviewing something you seem not to like at all? (laughs) Content, homie. Anime, my boy, I'll tell you why. Because you can't only review games you enjoy. You need a contrast to differentiate good from bad. Sometimes when you take a chance on a game you might not like, you end up finding something really unique and special. Other times you end up with a Furby going... If you truly want people to stop criticizing video games, then you might as well hand the entire industry over to EA right now. Yeah. As goofy as this comment is, a lot of people seem to be on board with this logic, which is why IGN gives nearly every major release. Well, it's because people are mad that they're getting their favorite game. Listen, I, again, Total Biscuit, what did he say? Please, I think he said something to the effect of, please stop relying on balding middle-aged men to validate your video game choices. He said something like this. A- and it's like, yeah, that's very fucking true. These games, people say Fortnite's better than Sekiro. I don't know about that. Um, Let's see. I've never seen a whole lot more of these, but like... For, I feel like Fortnite Secure, that's like steak and ice cream, bro. Like, you can't compare the two. Like, I think that Fortnite and Sekiro are both S-tier 10 out of 10 games. 9 or higher. I mean, literally every video game released. Performance on consoles is sometimes disappointing, with frequent frame uh-huh. rate slowdowns and hitches in areas that run smoothly on the PC. Sounds like a 9 out on of 10 to me. On all platforms, we saw occasional crashes. 
And every so often there's a quest that won't properly begin or Maybe end due to scripting 5? bugs. It has a little something for everyone. The storytelling within them feels as oh simplistic and predictable as ever. There's nothing all that challenging yep, about it. It didn't it really surprise me though. There's definitely a bit of sluggishness to the overall pacing too. It has a little something for everyone. The immersion is occasionally broken by draw distance, textures that sometimes arrive late to the party, or getting terminally stuck on geometry. Or maybe a lootable item will become unreachable, or your tame beast becomes untamed when you die and reload. That looks like a cool game. The bugs are annoying, sure. At the yeah. same time, it's padded out with meaningless errors. This is that a nine point point those strong character moments. Nine point zero, nine point five. It has a little something for everyone. Yeah. But ooh, on that off day where that two. fucking troublemaker it's a good game. Dinkus gives Days Gone a six out of ten. That is where they go too far. Oh, Fuck yeah. IGN. This is why I never come here for reviews. I heard Guy that game was on really IGN good. right now for reviews. Clearly, this Disney lady should be fired. That. Now let's watch the review. Days Gone kicks off relatively okay. simply. You play as a biker riding through an open somewhere. Yeah, you can feel it see, in the see what combat. she did wrong? She gave Days Gone a 6.5. I, yeah. I mean, this is the guys who did Bubsy 3D. Do you really think those guys are going to drop the ball? And it has of zombies and open world? Hello? <laughs> Now, how Ooh. come I can talk shit on every game and IGN can't talk shit on any game? Well, isn't it obvious? It's because IGN is nitpicking and biased. I win. Bye-bye. Shut the website off. Boom, there it is. Hey, hey. Because they lying and I'm not. It's just that simple. You know it, I know it. Everybody knows it. There it is. Yep, got him. True. All right, yeah, that was a good video. I'll link that one for you again, based, yeah, true. The source, none, I just made it up. Yeah, I just made it up, that's right, yeah, there it is. And uh, I, I like these videos, these are fucking funny. Uh, we, I saw the Overwatch 2 video. We got a million other things to look at, a million other things to talk about. I don't want to get too far into this, but what I will say is this. Um, there is a lot of uh, there's a lot of people like this about the the game critics and all this stuff, etc. I think that people get pissed off Twitter drama. Yeah, I'll look at the Twitter drama stuff in a second. Okay, yeah, this happened uh, yesterday, and um, I, I'll bring up the whole uh, the whole situation and the way that it all occurred. Okay, and let's go back over. We'll go up to the very very top. All right. So, uh, yeah, here we go. We'll talk about this, but before I do that, I want to say uh, the Donkey video was very good. I liked it a lot. I agree with them. I think that also it depends on if you are making a joke video. I think that in general, it's not gonna you're not going to be considered serious as if you're like an actual reviewer, right? I think that's what the conversation is about too. The conversation is about dating needs trims to find. Pay to win is different depending on who you ask. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, that's always the way it goes, man.